Hey guys, this is Jason from Overhype Studio and today um, we're gonna start off with a new Let's Play series and um, we will showcase all the new things that you um, can already experience in the uh, beta branch um, on Steam but um, this is not yet in the normal version of the game so I'm gonna go through all the changes but uh, the main focus of this series will be a uh, Let's Play with the um, yeah, developers insight on what's happening and um, I think we're going to start on the normal difficulty. Uh, challenging is, is, is really for someone who, who really knows what he's doing. And um, when I keep talking at the same time, I'm going to lose a little bit of focus. And uh, that will probably be a really short series then. Um, we're going to name our new company The Kingmakers. And um, here you can already see a couple of new things. Um, we have remade, no, not really remade, but new banners. Really high quality artwork now, um, a lot of details on them. And um, I think personally the, uh, they look way, way better than the old ones. Much more detail, much more character. And um, you can already, already have like a, a story in the back of your head when you're looking at them. And we also have the Iron Man mode. Um, a lot of people actually asked for that, so we implemented it and it stops you from saving uh, manually. So it, it will only save on special occasions, but we're not going to do that. So the Kingmakers it is. And um, let's jump into the, uh, into the new series. I don't know yet how many episodes we will, we will do, but I hope a lot more than last time. So um, yeah, we will see. Um, uh, what, what our company will go through and at the same time I can show you uh, some of the new features that we implemented, mainly the new perk system and the injury system. So here's the first tutorial battle. Uh, we see our men getting slaughtered um, by a bandit ambush. And this is Hoggart the Weasel. He uh, led that, those bandits and he's fleeing like his name suggests. So now these are my three starting brothers. And um, we, we changed the, the equipment up a little bit. They now um, boast a crossbow, uh, which is a bit more suited for a mercenary band. They used to have a um, used to have a bow. So let's shoot at that guy. And instantly I injured him. So you saw the icon dropping on his head. And he now has a pierced chest. But um, the injuries depend on the kind of weapon you're using. So bows and arrows and pikes will do piercing damage and uh, for example a, an axe will do a cutting damage or um, or a, a mace will do a blunt a blunt trauma so let's uh, get rid of this guy's shield like this and I really want to stop this guy from from uh, attacking Hubert with his short sword so I'm moving into contact now we see him, he's in the zone of control so he cannot move out and um, attack Hubert, who's my crossbow brother. Uh, first gotta reload the crossbow. Now for the first uh, few minutes I will click on these on these icons, on the skills, so you can see what I'm doing. And after that I will only use the, the number keys to like this. To just pressing one um, will um, toggle the key and uh, will toggle the skill and will allow me to do that a lot faster. So now free shot, nobody's in the line of sight. Unfortunately, we missed, but we've got two. Um, can stab him two times, so you got a second. He got a grazed kidney, the second injury. This guy's pretty much out of the picture. And there he goes. So now we have another band attack left. Emrich the Bloody. Why is he called the Bloody? Usually it has something to do with his, um, with his perks. No, not really. Iron Lung. That's not a perk, it's a trait. So, um, yeah, let's split this guy. Well done. So uh, we cut his arm really badly and he's already very fatigued. This guy won't put up much of a fight. Pickaxe is a really nasty weapon though. Let's reload and shoot the guy from close distance. Well done. Okay, now we get the um, statistics screen, screen after combat. You can see like how many uh, enemies that have been killed by this character, how many experience. And here you will also see the injuries if some of, of our own guys get injured. And uh, of course, the, of course, the loot. We've got a pickaxe, really good against armor, and a, a short sword. So, in here, you can also see something new. I will show that in a second. 
I will uh, jump through the, um, to the text, texts and won't read them out loud um, just to, to speed up things a little bit. So let's take a look at one of the things that we just added and this is a bandages. So the bandages will um, be a, an accessory item. So you can both store them in your backpack or in the accessory slot. And once you put them in the accessory slot, they will give you the first aid skill. And with the first aid skill, you can remove a bleeding status effect or remove a cut artery and cut neck injuries. So you can use this during combat to stop bleeding and um, this may save a life. So this is a consumable, a one time only. We have more consumables in the game. But um, I, won't, I won't talk about them right now. So uh, let's do what we were told and um, return to uh, the city we came from. You can see by the coin that you have to go there. And um, we will complete our um, contract that we had uh, to stop uh, Hoggart, who unfortunately fled the, the fight. Um, but as we most lost most of our men, we have to resupply and um, yeah, get some new weapons and armors and all that. So this guy hired us to find Hoggart and kill him. Unfortunately, everything went south from there. And, um, but we still managed to dis dispatch his thugs. So we're going to get a little bit of gold for that. And now he's asking us to finish the job, basically, um, to uh, look for Hoggart, hire some new men, hire, uh, get some new weapons, and uh, finish the um, finish the Hoggart business. Uh, we will opt for that. So at this point, you can skip it. So uh, this is still part of the tutorial, but we will do it. And um, what we are asked next to do is uh, to visit Kargburg. That's um, supposed to be like a bigger city. Because this is like a really small fishing village, right? And um, recruit at least three more men and buy some weapons and armor. So here's another thing that we added. Like when you zoom out really far, uh, there's a small, our company. Zoom out really far, you will get the company banner in large. So now you can see where you're actually at. I mean, the world is pretty large. So um, that's very helpful to do that. Okay, I think we will arrive there before nightfall because then the, all the shops close. I hope at least. Okay, here's our uh, our men. This is still part of the tutorial, so I will skip a little bit through it. Um, they uh, tell us what to do in a bigger city, for example, visit the tavern and so on. A uh, tavern's a really great place to go. Unfortunately, there's none in here. So um, what do we have here? We have a kennels. It's a pretty rare building, actually, uh, where you can hire war dogs. They are really awesome, and I think we gonna hire one let's hire an um, armored war dog uh, make gonna make use that we have a camels here and usually you, you should go to the marketplace um, because equipment is a bit cheaper here uh, than in the specialized shops first of all we're gonna grab some shields grab some low tier armor this chain mail is too expensive in the beginning of the game so we won't bother with that and maybe a pitchforks or a also very good weapon in the beginning and um, let's grab a spear. Spear have, has a uh, massive to hit bonus so it's a very good weapon to have, have, have at the beginning when, you're, when your mercs are really low skill. Okay let's hire some guys. Um, now we changed something up um, with the hiring and you will see it in a second and it really changes uh, how you treat your how you treat your mercs. So this guy is a messenger I think we're just gonna grab him. I'm gonna focus on, I mean, I can't afford those guys. They're really expensive. So I'm gonna hire the cheap guys. And this guy's a caravan hand, Utard. Welcome on the team. And um, now we have, uh, we added this in the last update, the, um, the system where you can um, put people in reserve, you know, for example, when, when they're healing or um, uh, change the formation, like put the put the archers in the back or a guy with a two-handed weapon. And um, now I can show you something else that we added and that we're really, um, really excited about. So every mercenary you hire from now will have talents. And a talent is a little star that you can see over here. 
Um, every mercenary has three talents and they're completely random. And what these talents do is they increase um, the amount of attribute points you will get on the level up. So um, they are one star, two star, and there are even some with three stars, although they're very rare. And um, when leveling up uh, a talent where you have um, or an, uh, an attrib attribute where you have a talent, uh, you will get more attribute points. So, for example, this guy, you can see that he will make a pretty good bowman because he has like a small talent in it. And um, your starting brothers also have these talents. So this guy has already 47 range skill and two star talent. And so he is really a dedicated archer. These guys, these two guys I hired are actually really bad. So I'm gonna put this guy in the second row. He has a decent mini skill. And this guy is also really bad. Let's uh, just quickly dish out a decent helmet. Guy with the two-handed weapon should always have a good armor because he, do he doesn't have a shield. Shields are absolutely essential in the early game. Let's give him a spear. As I mentioned before, spears have a um, it's like 20% to hit chance with the normal attack. I really, we really need that with this low melee skill. Okay, we will need some more guys, I think. I will ignore all the um, specialized shops for now. So here uh, is the weaponsmith, really expensive though, and the armorsmith. So he has like the, the most epic armor, uh, but it's uh, completely out of our league, like 6,000 crowns. Uh, maybe in like a couple of hours of gameplay actually. So um, I did manage to, to hire three re recruits here because they were so expensive. But it doesn't really matter where we we are getting this, so um, yeah, I will I will just uh, get another recruit in Seefeld, and then it's time to finish off Hogarth. That is like the the the, uh, the first real battle that you are pitched in, and I would highly rec recommend like getting more than six people, six or seven people for that first fight, and then you should be fine. Because everything everything else is like a little low. Okay. Now the morning morning is here, so we can do business. Shops will close later on. Okay, what do we have here? We have a monk. As you can see, there are no professional soldiers in here. It's just a small fishing village. You have a lot of fishers. You have a peddler, a monk, and um, this guy, Taylor. Uh, I, I don't really dig the tailors. Let's get, let's get the monk on the team and the peddler. So now we have seven. <laughs> Let's have a quick look at the talents of these guys. Okay, he's got a decent talent for hit points, range combat. Oh, this 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 guy is really bad. I mean, he has an amazing resolve, and he also has a talent. So I think I'm gonna keep him in the back line, and um, making some sort of supportive character. And this guy is also very bad. <laughs> Oh man, this is and we'll run in for one right here. Um, yeah, he's got a double talent, but resolve. We already have a Bernard the Brave. I mean, his name says it says it all. So we don't need actually to to put any resolve here. So um, yeah, let's do like so. He still needs a weapon. Let's have a quick look at the marketplace. Maybe we can find something. How about another pitchfork? That's decent. Okay. Let's grab quickly grab some more food. You get the pitchfork. He, he only has a monk's robe and a pitchfork. But uh, maybe I hope he will survive the first fight. You know what? Let's get another. I mean, um, the guys I have on the team are so bad and I have uh, a bit of money left. I will get a, another guy on the team. So we'll get some cannon fodder. This is Adelbert, and Adelbert has pretty high talent. He has got a two-star talent on ranged combat and a three-star talent on um, ranged defense. So he is actually also a very, very decent guy for the back line. And he has a high initiative as well. Um, he's also bright. I mean, he has a high experience gain. I will get a shield and spear for him. We're going to keep him in the front line. really need the front line guys right now. There you go. You will keep the net. I will keep the throwing net and try to, to catch Hoggart in the net. And he will get like a really serious um, 
um, penalty for all, all his skills while he's, he's caught up in the net. And um, yeah, I hope we can do that. Let's throw a net over his head and then stab him. Okay, so he now tells us where Hoggard is hiding out and um, tells us to go there and finish the job. Okay, where is he? Okay, he's up there. We will make it in time. Okay, this is exciting. I hope we, I hope we're not losing too many guys, but um, maybe I can show you then some more of the uh, injury system. So uh, maybe it's a good thing. Uh, I was really unlucky with my recruits, but um, hey, that's a mercenary real life. I mean, th these are not fighters. I mean, everybody I, I have on the team, like this is a fisherman. Um, this guy's a messenger, so he used to deliver messengers. Uh, he's a monk. So these are not fighters and they have absolutely no fighting experience and we will see that in combat in a second. Um, these, these guys mostly join out of desperation or if you read their backstory you can see their, their uh, motivation for becoming a mercenary. And I, I take what I can get. Okay, so this is in the mountains. I have a pretty decent, um, pretty decent starting position here right on the, on the hillside. That's a really big advantage for me. And I can just wait it out uh, for them to, to come here. So let's see. I can already shoot at the guy, but I'm going to wait. Use the wait turn and then you will get um, pushed to the end of the turn order. So I want them to come closer so I have a better chance of actually hitting them. I'm going to wait. There's a marksman firing away. And he hit the shield. We already also changed something about the sh how shields work. So now when uh, an attack uh, misses, there's actually, an, uh, uh, if it misses because of the um, defensive bonus of a shield, then you will see a little animation where the guy blocks the um, attack with the shield. I think it lot adds a lot of immersion and uh, makes combat much more interesting to watch. And also you feel more competent because before that you will only hit like through the air if you're, when you're missing and that uh, made your guys look really stupid. Okay, I want them to advance more. They're really holding back a little bit. Trying to circle me. These guys don't have shields. This guy's really dangerous. With the two-handed axe, he can one one shot one of my guys. Um, if I'm not careful. So I think I'm gonna wait with this guy. Okay, now it's time to shoot. He moved the guy with the shield closest to my archer. That's pretty pretty good tactics. I think I'm gonna shoot this guy. He has no armor, and if I hit him, it's may mostly guaranteed injury. Yeah, there you go. Um, if you get an injury or not depends on how many hit point damage you take and then there's a chance. So um, somebody here with no armor, if he gets hit, he's most likely getting an injury. Injured shoulder, I think it's lowering in his, his melee skill and his damage. So it's really good. I don't know if I'm... Yeah, I should move up. This, this um, uh, pike, or well, it's not a pike, it's a pitchfork, has a range of one tile, so I can attack him here, but I move too far to do that this turn. So I'm just gonna move up. I want this guy to um, to throw a net on Hogger. How do I get him over there? This is a bit tricky. I think I'm just gonna focus on this guy first. And let's get out the shield. So um, I, he's just wearing a robe, so he's he's completely uh, very very vulnerable to any kind of attacks. Now we have a uh, the Emmerich the Bloody, and he has a with a two-handed axe he can uh, destroy a shield instantly, which is like a really amazing feat of the two-handed axe. I think I'm gonna wait it out. I'm gonna move here, but with Bernard, so he has a height advantage. Height advantage is very, very important. Actually, it gives you better chances to hit and um, makes it harder for the other guy to hit you. And I will activate Spear Walls, a defensive ability, and everybody who, anybody who moves into the one tie range will get automatically attacked. Okay, so Magnus, and now I have a first attack. Well done, I stabbed his, his rope, so his body armor is gone. And with you, I'm gonna move he still has, he has the war dog. So let me move over here and I try to, to get the war dog to attack the archer next turn. Gonna make shield wall increase, it greatly increases his defense. There you see he hit the shield. Great stuff. Archer missed. 
and he moved over two tiles so he won't be able to attack now my two pitchfork guys are in range and can attack and um, we also changed how overwhelm mechanic work before it was a um, that you get a bonus to hit a guy uh, um, for each uh, other character that attacked the same target before so now I wouldn't get any to hit bonus if I attack first in the turn I have to wait then I would have to attack with these guys and then I would get the bonus and that was very complicated I think nobody really understood that so now we changed it so that I will get a bonus for each adjacent friendly character so the more characters are around him the, the higher the bonus gets for all of my guys so it's um, we call it a surround mechanic instead of overwhelm and I think it works pretty well it's really easy to understand and um, and and way easier to use properly okay stab this guy now the shield is in the way only 46 percent I think I'm gonna stab this really dangerous guy well done great 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 let's move up one tile I really need to focus on hogger he's like the most dangerous guy in the mix okay he's up next you can see it in the turn turn bar I am um, I don't want to hit him I uh, want him to hit me so I just gonna attack him with the spear spear has really high chance to, to hit despite the shield unfortunately I hit the shield now he's using a shield wall now it's, it's really hard to hit 45% I, I think I can try to do that well done well done okay this guy's trying to be a really sneaky and um, circle around to get my archer but um, Luckily, I have some movement points left, so I can get, I can get to him. Yeah, I will do this. Emmerich will take care of that guy. I have my archer. Um, why not just straight up shoot his archer? Fifty percent is not really good, but um, problem is this line of fire is blocked. This line of fire is also blocked, so this is the only free target. Well done, well done. He's no armor, so he, he's instantly pierced side. I think that reduces his fatigue and his um, hit points. And reload. Great shot. Okay, so now it's Magnus' turn. Didn't use him before. I think I'm just going to double up on Hoggard. Yeah, let's do that. Um, he, has a, he has a really good position, uh, actually, because he's just moved here I can if I move right next to him I, I'm gonna be in the um, in the uh, low elevation it's really bad for me I think I won't stab him I think I'm just gonna shield wall for now and shield wall and one attack well done I said okay it's time for um, the two-handed axe 57% is really good I won't kill him in one blow but definitely damaged a lot of his armor. <laughs> well done, and an injury to boot. Cut arm sinew, I think that really severely um, reduces his offensive c capabilities. So I can now finish him off with the, um, with the pitchfork. Move this guy into position to attack Hoggard. And I think I can try to make for the, um, for the archer. Here you usually will try to flee when you get really close to him. And uh, then I will send the the war dog. Move over here. I mean, I want to get the surround bonus. I just use the shield wall. Okay, attack this guy at 62%. It's really good. I have a better idea. I move up here. I get an elevation bonus. 72%. And he missed well. Okay, Hoggard is going. Oh, it's going on the defensive here. Like I said, he's going to trying to flee. Hoggard's going on the defensive, activating his repost and shield wall. Uh, repost is if, if somebody attacks him and misses, he will attack back. And in combination with the shield wall, that greatly increases his defense. This is a really good young combination, ex especially against low skill enemies, because they will attack, miss, and then trigger a counter attack and get wrecked. Okay, here's a clear line of fire. Uh, crossbow only needs the, um, like two AP action points to shoot. So you can move three, three points and shoot. I think this is a dead thug. Ah, oh, come on, he missed it. Okay, who was the guy with the war dog? Not this guy. With a spear, I can risk it because it's a very high chance to hit. Ah, 40%. Well, I take it. Well done. Okay, this guy has the um, 
as a warlock. I really need to get the warlock to go. So I'm going to use another ability knockback. I want to knock him down onto the low elevation. That will really increase my chances to deal with him. And now I'm going to follow the archer. Okay, move up. Attack. 43. Well, okay. I really need to... Yeah, I think I'm going to focus on Hoggart first. Attack him. Oh, there he is. Oh no, he just hit Bernard the Brave right in the leg, pierced leg muscle, an arrow to the knee basically. Um, yeah, that severely reduces his movement range and I have to heal this injury. So that's really bad. That was a lucky shot from this marksman. I should have gone for the marksman. Anyways, let's finish off this duck. Got him another injury I and mean, this guy is, has like one hit point left. But he's still alive. Come on. Now you're embarrassing me. It's 69%. Well done. Okay, take care of Hoggard. I think we got an all, all out attack. 60% is really good. Hit the shield. Well done, injury inflicted. Let's move over here. Hit the shield. Oh, he hit my guy. Okay, um, I moved over here because the war dog will usually attack the next available target. So. Hmm. When I'm moving here, I hope that the dog will go for the archer, but uh, it's not really 100% sure. Yes, he will. Great. Well done. Now the dog is attacking. <laughs> he bit, his, he, um, he dig, uh, bit him in the uh, stomach. So I think the war dog will finish off this poor archer. The war dogs are exceptional for hunting down archers. And you should always have at least one of them in your, in your squad. Okay, now finish Hoggart. Well done. But I have to say, these guys did a lot better than I expected them to do. I, we had a really favorable um, environment. If it was the other way around, if I attacked him on a, on a hill, I would have ended in a massacre, I think. But, um, yeah, yeah, we only sustained one injury. Okay, I, I don't want to, uh, to, to, to talk too much about this, because it brings bad luck before the last guy is actually killed. But um, it looks really decent. I think dog will finish him. Well done. Okay, that was really good. I mean, we got a couple of wounded guys and just one injury. That reduces his melee defense and initiative. That's pierced leg muscles. It will take three to five days, which is a lot of time um, to heal. And um, the th good thing is that it doesn't really affect his, his role in combat. He can still stand in the second line of, uh, of, the, of the battle line and, um, and fight effectively with his pitchfork. So I think it's I'm fine. It could have been worse, way worse. And I didn't lose a guy, I mean, all this, despite my really, really low armor. Let's take a look at what we got. Uh, we got two shields, um, a fashion. That's a really good weapon. And we've got some cloth. Um, that's pretty decent. Another bow, we can use that. Let's take all of that stuff. And um, yeah, here's a little uh, the wake of the battle described. And uh, now we can go back to the field and finish our task. We will get another 400 crown for that. So um, are we going to just uh, jump over there? He's, he's explaining us that we should camp to repair armor and uh, heal up. So we're going to go to Seefeld and um, cash in and then we're free to go. And that will be the end of this first video. So um, it's already a bit longer than I wanted it to be, but uh, it was a, a good way to finish the tutorial. And now um, this is the final text of the tutorial telling how we cash in the contract and um, that we're now free to go and uh, pursue our luck elsewhere. Okay, so um, this is the first episode of the um, of the Kingmakers, and uh, I think we had a pretty good start. I mean, our guys are really, really bad. We were very unlucky with the uh, with the rolls on the talents, and um, but they out outdid themselves. I mean, they had like a really good performance in combat in that first fight. So I'm really excited about um, about all the adventures that are coming up. I think I'm going to need to hire some more guys because we're just going to spam the enemy with a really low quality characters in the beginning. And um, yes, so uh, next time I, we can maybe take a look at the perk system. This is completely new. We, um, 
we uh, redid all the perks, but I will go into a de more detail on that when um, we have the first level ups. So um, stay tuned for the next episode and bye.